What's up team, today I'm going to show you guys exactly how to make a mock-up for your clothing brand using Procreate. I'm using the iPad Air M1 with 128 gigabytes and the stylus that I'm using is the Apple Pencil. Let's start by creating a new artboard 3000 by 3000 pixels at a DPI of no less than 300. Following that, we're going to go ahead and import an image or a hoodie. This one is directly from Balenciaga and this is going to be the one that we trace to make this mock-up. Next, I want you to go ahead and tap the spanner icon and then I want you to go ahead and go into canvas. And while you're in the canvas settings, I want you to turn on the drawing guide. Once you turn on drawing guide, you'll be hit with this template, but just head over to symmetry and then press done. Next, make sure the new layer that you've added on top has assisted on there. If you don't see it, just click on it and you'll see drawing assist and make sure that's checked. The brush I'm gonna be using is a studio pen and I'm gonna go ahead and just turn the opacity down of the original layer so we know exactly which layer we're drawing on. Trust me, this happens a lot. If you end up drawing on the layer that has the original image on it, you can't really use it. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and just use a studio pen and the smoothing for the studio pen, I like to vary between anywhere of 60 all the way to 85 roughly in terms of amount of stabilization. Now you're ready and set. You just need to go to town and start tracing this hoodie as best as you can. And I always love to say, do as I say and not as I do. So make sure you don't rush this process and take it fairly slowly, especially if you're making a mock-up and you want it to look nice. And if you want very clean lines, up the stabilization and spend more time making sure your lines are perfect. Me, I want this to have a more stylized effect. So I'm gonna go ahead and just rough it. I also like to use a smaller brush, almost half the size of my main brush to go in and add in details like stitch lines without having to make a stitch line myself. Ideally, I plan on dropping a pack for Procreate at a certain point because I want to, you know, build it natively within the program and not just reuse my other ones from, you know, Illustrator and stuff like that because they're not made for the program. Sure, you can use the PNGs from the technical and you can go ahead and make those. But again, they're not stabilized for this program and they weren't built in this program. So you're not getting the full use out of them. So again, I eventually will build a pack for Procreate, but I just haven't had the time to sit down and create it all. I've made one before like the sketchbook, but those are drafts and I didn't really like them. So with little intricate lines like this, you know, center line for the zipper, if you go ahead and just drag your pencil down and hold it at the end, it's gonna go ahead and straighten it up. But again, it, straighten it, uh, it straightens it to the point of the direction which it sees the line going in. So if you don't have the line in a general straight direction or it's bending out a bit, Procreate themselves will go ahead and align it to wherever that stroke is. So try your best to keep it straight or going in a general direction and try to make sure it doesn't flare out so your lines look a bit more professional. If you want that stylized IG look, you can go ahead and add in parts of where you see, I guess, folds to make it look a bit more realistic. I wouldn't say the term is realistic. I would say the term is, you know, um, stylized. Because when it comes to technicals, this sort of thing where you add the stylized stuff isn't really needed. It actually confuses the manufacturer sometimes because they try to recreate that to the T, which you don't really want. But again, if you wanted to have that look like you see on Instagram, go ahead and draw in these little lines. Let's follow up by duplicating the layer we just created. And now this is going to be our color layer. So we're gonna go ahead and just drag this underneath our original layer and start filling this layer in with any color that you want. So this is can be your color layer, whatever color you want, just start coloring it in. If you guys don't know how to color with Procreate, you'd literally just drag and drop that little circle into a closed area to color it in. Next, you wanna go ahead and add in a new layer on top of your color layer, and you can go ahead and make sure the assisted drawing is on that one as well, and create a clipping mask, and then go in with the exact same brush. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my studio brush, and then I'm gonna go ahead and draw shapes of where I would think shadows are going to be. Now, if you want to make this professionally correct, make sure your assisted drawing is not on and then draw shadows depending on the direction of light. For the sake of this video, I just did it this way to show you an explanation of how to make shadows. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and draw shapes in the general areas where I want the shadow and then fill that layer in. Let's say you're happy with something like this. Go ahead and go to the magic wand or whatever it's called, the adjustments, and then go to gush and blur, and then just drag your pencil or drag your finger upwards to add a bit of a blur, something around here. You don't want it to be too dramatic. 
and then go into the actual layer and then drop down the opacity by around 40%. And now your mockups is looking a little bit more professional than just a standard flat color. Now it's time to add in your design. So you're gonna add your design in between the two layers. So the layer of the color and then the layer of the line work at the top. Go ahead and remove any excess um, graphics. So if you want the graphic to be like full chest or print and you see how the sleeves are hanging over, obviously the design's not gonna be printed on the sleeves. So go ahead and remove that and then drop the opacity down of your graphic as well. Again, this is just another trick to make it visually look a bit more professional. Next, we're gonna go ahead and add in a texture. So go ahead and click the spanner, insert file or photo, wherever your texture is. This one's from Texture Labs and it's pretty sure just called the shirt file or whatever it's called. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and just distort it to fit our actual mockup. Once that's fitted, I'm gonna go ahead and group all our designs. So I'm gonna go ahead and just press combine for everything, make sure everything is in one group. Once everything is in one group, I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate that group and then flatten it, which allows us to create a clipping mask on that flattened group. And then I'm gonna set the blend mode to add. Once I set the blend mode to add, I'm gonna go ahead and just play with the opacity until I'm happy with the results. And now you have a texture on your mockup. Now, this is only good for, I would say, Instagram, not really needed for a manufacturer. They wanna see the graphic as flat as possible. And also make sure you always have a separate file for your graphic to send to your manufacturer. Do not send them this. But now you're finished. I love you. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.